Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and on this channel, we discuss all things financial services. We talk about the comp plans, we talk about the products, we talk about the IMOs, and we compare all of these things. We provide you the documentation, and we allow you to make the decision of what's best for you. So this week, we're going to continue our agent training series, which, by the way, we do every Wednesday, and on Sundays, we upload another video. So Wednesdays are agent training series and on Sunday it's just a random thing that I discuss whatever's on my mind or what I've been asked for most frequently during the course of the week no real schedule but on Wednesdays we try to identify a certain spot where people are saying they need help and this week I want to address a question I get all the time many agents are confused as to what we sell here in the mortgage detection field many confuse it with the type of mortgage detection that's required by the bank or a product called MPI, which is the true mortgage protection insurance. More common might be the better word for it. So let's get into it. First, let's deal with the different types that people think of when thinking of mortgage protection and then the actual definitions. So hopefully uh, it will make sense and will clear up any confusion because again, we're in the mortgage protection market, the mortgage protection niche, but it's not the same as what people commonly refer to as mortgage protection insurance. Really in its most generic sense, it's life insurance that we're using to protect the mortgage, thereby calling it mortgage protection insurance. But again, I think it's important for you to have a bigger uh, overview. Okay, so the first one is what they call PMI. Okay, now PMI protects the lender. Very important to understand that, right? Not you or the homeowner. It protects the lender against the risk that you will default on your mortgage. Conventional financing requires PMI when the loan to value ratio, or what they call LTV, is over 80% of the appraised value. So a loan to value would be over 80%, and that's where this is gonna be required. In other words, if you put down less than 20% on your, on your mortgage, The banks are going to require you to carry PMI, right? Private mortgage insurance, okay? The next one is MPI. And this is where people kind of get confused a little bit, right? And this stands for mortgage protection insurance. It's more of an optional product, right? It, it's very similar to what we're doing in terms of that it is life insurance. But again, it makes the loan payments when an unusual insured event might prevent normal payments from being made. A policy is typically uh, intended to pay off the mortgage if the insured dies, right? Obviously, that's what we're doing this for. It also might be used to protect against disability uh, or unemployment in some states that that's allowed, in some states it's not. Either of which could cause hardship or financial distress. So in other words, debt, disability, or unemployment, right? So the disability and job loss provisions cover the home's loan principal and interest payments for a set or defined period of time. And in some cases, there can be a waiting period before the disability actually kicks in. This is where it becomes very obvious that it's not a good value and why they should buy from you and not buy this particular product, which is MPI, again, mortgage protection insurance, right? The life insurance component, like the mortgage protection balance, declines over time, right? So basically, you have let's just say your your mortgage is three hundred thousand dollars right and over time your mortgage is going down right your principal your mortgage is going down but so is the insurance coverage the idea is that every month you make your payment your mortgage is less so you need less coverage right and uh it's called it's basically decreasing term insurance okay uh, which I do not recommend in any case. In fact, Mor Money Magazine did an article about this many years ago, probably 15 to 18 years ago, and made a big deal about how bad this is. Basically calling it a ripoff and a scan. They probably went a little bit overboard, but they're trying to sell magazines. However, the gist of it is true, right? So this is what you're selling against, right? Decreasing term. It's a horrible investment. The idea of it is, like I said, is as your mortgage goes down, so is your coverage. The challenge is, I'm going to go into this a little bit more in detail here in a few minutes. The challenge is, is that guess what doesn't go down? You're 20, let's just say you're 15 years out, 
you now owe, let's just say, $50,000 on your mortgage, assuming it started at $300,000, okay? Now you're down to 15 years, and now you're decreasing term coverage. Let's just say it went from $300,000 to $150,000, right? So your coverage has gone down in, in lockstep. So your coverage has gone down in lockstep with your mortgage. What hasn't gone down is your premium. Let's just say you start out at $300 a month, right? Well, even down here when you only have $2,000 balance on your mortgage, you're still paying, three, not 300, not 300K, but $300 a month for that protection. Horrible investment. So again, mortgage is going down, your coverage is going down. What doesn't go down is your monthly premium payment on that coverage. Bad investment, you can do better, and that's exactly what I tell my clients, right? So here's how I explain this in the home. Let me get rid of my board here for one second. So this is basically how I do it in the home, right? So Jack and Jill, when you took out that mortgage of $246,000, if they would have asked you if you wanted mortgage section insurance at closing and you would have said yes, the first month, you would have had $246,000 worth of coverage, right? But you see, every month you make your mortgage payment, your mortgage goes down, but so does the amount of your mortgage. Okay, so when I'm in the home, I'm gonna explain it just like this. So Jack and Jill, when you took out that $246,000 mortgage, if they would have asked you if you wanted mortgage protection coverage at closing, and you would have said yes, the first month, you'd have had $246,000 worth of coverage, right? But you see, every month you make your mortgage payment, your mortgage goes down, but so does the amount of your mortgage. It looks something like this. So you start out with a $246,000 mortgage, right? So you're gonna sell you $246,000. Let's just say the premium payment for that is $250 a month, okay? Now every month you make your mortgage payment, your mortgage is going down, right? Let's assume you have a 30-year mortgage. Now, what happens with the insurance coverage you're paying $250 a month for is designed to go in lockstep with your mortgage, so it's also going down, right? So again, every time you make a mortgage payment, the amount of this coverage is going down as well. Let's just say you get all the way out here 20 years, and you have $10,000 left on your mortgage, okay? Now, your mortgage has gone down over that 30-year period. We're down to 20 years. We, got, we still owe $10,000. My insurance coverage has gone, gone down to kind of fit lockstep with my mortgage. So I owe about $10,000, and I have about $10,000 of the coverage, right? So what's that Jackie deal hasn't gone down? You're right. The premium payments haven't decreased at all. So you're paying $250 a month now for $10,000 that you used to pay for $246,000, right? Now here's the problem. So 20 years out, you only owe $10,000 in the mortgage. And if someone dies, the mortgage would be paid off with that remaining $10,000 worth of uh, insurance you have for your $10,000 balance on your mortgage, right? But let's just say one of you had a long illness and ended up dying, leaving a ton of medical bills or auxiliary debt so high that they could choke a horse. Doesn't matter. The bank gets the $10,000 and that's because the beneficiary is not your surviving spouse or family, it's the bank. So no other money's are being paid out and you're left with this auxiliary debt or medical bills. And listen, I don't like that at all, but that's not why I don't like this type of coverage. The reason I don't like this type of coverage is anytime you alter your mortgage, move or refinance, you alter the coverage, right? Let's just say you wanna add on to the home, put an extra room in, repave the driveway, etc. Uh, and you can afford it, no problem, uh, no big deal. But six months before that, one of you had a mild stroke, so mild that they can't even detect it, right? So you refinance to pay for the upgrades. Doesn't matter, if you alter that mortgage in any way, shape, or form, you lose the coverage and you can't get it back again without having to apply for new coverage and the premiums would be higher as you're now older and possibly in not nearly as good of health right? Or worst case scenario, you might be uninsurable, right? And what you told me about yourselves, you can do better than option number one. I don't re recommend this one at all. Now we've talked about PMI, which is required if your loan to value is more than 80% or you put down less than 20%, it's required by the bank. We've talked about MPI, 
which is this here, which is decreasing term, horrific value. This is basically what we're selling against. This is true, what they call mortgage protection insurance, right? Now, this is what we put together for our folks. Whatever we start off with payment wise, so our payment remains level, guaranteed not to change. And whatever we choose for face amount or coverage, however you want to say it, that's also guaranteed never to change. It's not going to go up or down, unlike these other options that I've showed you. This is basically term insurance, right? Life insurance. Again, we're using life insurance, calling it mortgage protection insurance, because we're using the proceeds from the life insurance to protect the mortgage. The difference is that the bank is not the beneficiary. We choose the beneficiary, and the beneficiary can do what they want to with the proceeds. They don't have to pay the mortgage off. That's why they, it's not attached to the mortgage, unlike the other policies we have, right? It's separate from the mortgage. We choose the beneficiary, the money goes to the spouse, the surviving spouse or the kids. They can either pay off the mortgage, pay down the mortgage, or put the money in the bank and use the interest to pay the mortgage. They choose what to do with it, but the home is protected because of the proceeds coming from this, usually it's a term insurance policy, right? Now, at the end of the 30 year policy, whatever it is, 20 or 30 years, usually I, I always recommend 15, 20 or 30 years. Most people's mortgages are 30, so it makes sense to go with 30. But at the end of the policy, this is where the difference is between how we take term insurance and utilize it to, and call it mortgage protection, right? Because at the end of 30 years and these other policies, they're going to cut you off. You're done, right? We're not going to do that. In 30 years or 20 years, however long the policy is that they purchase, right, or 15 years, they're going to call your spouse or whoever's um, uh, the policy, whoever owns the policy. They're going to call the insurance company at the end of the 30 years or 20 years or 15 years, whichever they've chosen to, to purchase, right? It's not tied to the mortgage, so they don't have to have a 30-year policy. They can do a 20, they can do a 15. Here's a tip for you that I talk about when I'm in the home. I tell them my recommendation is to get as much as you can for as long as you can, right? Because it's not going to get any cheaper. But at the end of the policy, the company's going to call you and say, hey, Jill, uh, do you want to continue the coverage? Typically speaking, Jack or Jill's going to chime in and say, well, the first thing I'd ask is how much is it? And I'm going to say, as an agent, I'm going to say, well, let's just say it's $1,000 a month, right? And what are you going to say, Jack and Jill? The first thing out of their mouth is, forget it, keep it, don't need it, don't want it, can't afford it, forget it, it's over, well, and everyone's happy. We're happy because you didn't die and we didn't have to pay out, and you're happy because you didn't die and you're still living. But what if two months, okay, what if two months... Before this policy expires, you find out you've got terminal cancer and you've got six months to live. Okay, think about that for a second. Well, now $1,000 a month for six months so that Jill can collect the $246,000 insurance policy. That sounds like a bargain, doesn't it? And every single one of them will say, Sure. I, I put out $6,000 to make sure that my wife got two forty-six. Well, so it's not just about the premium. What's it about? It's about the coverage. It's being able to have the coverage in place. So now it makes sense to put $1,000 a month on a credit card, and it starts to sound like a real bargain to collect the $246,000. Right, Jack and Jill? And they always say yes. Now, now, the difference with this is if you become permanently disabled, meaning totally disabled, if you can flip hamburgers, uh, you're not permanently disabled. But if you do become permanently disabled, you need to make only six more payments. And from that point forward, the insurance company will make all the payments up to the end of the policy period or for the next 30 years. And I draw it down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw a line. And I say up to age 95, the insurance company will make the payments on this policy for you for 30 years or up to 95th birthday, right? So in summary, We've talked about PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, which protects only the bank in the case that you default on the loan, period. Provides no monies for your family in the event of your debt. Then we've talked about MPI, mortgage protection insurance, which many people get confused with what we do, which is basically decreasing term, horrific investment. We sell against that with our term insurance, typically, 
right, which is level for the entire term. So if you choose a 15-year policy or a 20-year policy or a 30-year policy, it's guaranteed never to decrease. The payment is not going to go up. The coverage is not going to go down. Guaranteed. And if you become permanently disabled and you're disabled for longer than six months, right, they'll pick up the payments on the policy up until age 95, according to your 95th birthday. So that's our type of mortgage protection insurance. But we're utilizing life insurance as the vehicle to accomplish our goal, which is to provide money to your chosen beneficiary so they can pay the mortgage off, pay the mortgage down, put the money in the bank, go on a vacation. We don't care, but the home is protected so that they have the ability to pay off the home in the event of the death of either party on the mortgage. So if it's a joint mortgage with husband and spouse, you would need two policies, one on him, one on her. If either one dies, it pays out $246,000 to the surviving spouse. If both parties die, then it goes to the family, whoever they chose as their secondary beneficiaries. But it's all being done with traditional life insurance. Typically, it's a term policy for 15, 20, and 30 years. Plus, with the new living benefits now, if you become critically injured, terminally injured, or critically ill, you can now advance the $246,000, a portion thereof. Uh, some policies are up to 100%. You can get this, this money up front even without dying, right? Also, you're allowed to extend the benefits if it's in your best interest, not the insurance company, right? All right, that's a wrap. So we talked about PMI, we talked about MPI, and we talked about life insurance as the vehicle for mortgage protection insurance which is level premium and level coverage, guaranteed never to increase the payment, guaranteed never to decrease the coverage for the entire length of the policy. So we're using, again, life insurance and using it for mortgage protection. We're selling against the commonly known coverage as mortgage protection insurance because that's decreasing term and it's a horrific investment. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Please remember to, to mash the uh, bell for instant notifications of my live streams. Hit the subscribe button below and you'll get instant notifications of new videos as I put them up. Do me a great favor and hit the uh, like button. Share the video out to other agents that you may know in the area and help me help them uh, with this information. And make a comment. I love uh, hearing your comments and love getting your phone calls. If I can do anything to help any of you, my content information is in the description. My email's there. My phone number for my cell phone's there. You can text me, call me, or email me. More than happy to engage in a conversation. If you're looking for an IMO and you want to do some comparisons, reach out to me on that as well. We are also hiring nationwide in our agency. We don't take everybody, but we take people that have the same vision that we do. But I'm willing to help anybody that I can that reaches out to me and needs help. You deserve to be in this business. And remember, the surest way to succeed is be determined to never fail. Bye.